Fun Friday here on Stephanie TV, a new segment that I created to help you get in shape. Now, after I posted my Why I Run Naked blog, a few of you had questions about what beginner runners should do. So I created this video to give you seven tips to help you get out and get on the pavement. The first tip that I will tell anyone, and you probably heard this before, is invest in a good pair of running shoes. A good pair of running shoes makes all the difference if you want to start your career out on the sidelines with an injury, or if you have a great pair, you can go ahead and start putting miles in. So invest in a good pair of okay, running shoes. Okay, this is tip two. And this is a big one. Not a lot of people tell you this when they tell you to go out and hit the pavement. But if you're going to be in the sun, then you need some sun care. What I have right here is Kula. It's organic sun care. It's what I use whenever I have to hit the trails as you see outside or if I'm just running the streets. It is really good. It's very light. It's very hydrating and it smells amazing. I, what I tell my friends is it's not your mom's usual sunscreen. It's not thick. It's not ridiculous. It smells good. It does the trick and it's organic. So go ahead and go out and get you some Kula. If you want more information on Kula Sun Care, of course I'll put it in uh, the information box. So below. tip three, it's a good one. After you got some really good pair of running shoes, you got your some really good Kula Sun Care, what you need now is water. Cause you gotta make sure before you even head out that you're good, good and hydrated. So that's very important. Make sure that you have water so that you are hydrated. Tip four, set realistic goals. Do not go out there. I mean, if you've been out of the game for a while and you're calling yourself a beginning runner, what you need to do is set very realistic goals. Nothing takes a person outside, out of the game of running more if they go out and they do, you know, five days a week, five miles, and they just kind of go set some ridiculous goals that they don't accomplish because they weren't realistic yeah you'll be next thing you know you'll say oh my goodness you know i was out there i was running but you know what i hurt myself and you know i, I fell off the wagon and then that's the proverbial wagon that is always there that everybody always falls off of here's the thing set realistic goals and you'll be able to sit on the wagon a lot to five and this goes right after setting realistic goals when you start to hit the pavement the streets the trails as you can see as i'm out here or if you're just going to a gym and you're hitting the treadmill, which this is going to really play a big part. Go at your own pace, okay? When you're hitting the treadmill, especially when you're at gyms, it's, it, it gets, nobody likes to admit this, but you feel like there's a little competition going on to your left and your right, you know? So you're like, oh yeah, she thinks she's got it going on. She's going off at, it was five speed, oh, oh, you know? Here's the deal. You're just now getting back on the wagon, getting back on the treadmill, getting back out there and exercising, which you should actually commend yourself for. But running is a very mental sport and it's also very physical. And if you go out and you go fast and you won't last long, especially because your body's not used to it. And since your body's not used to it, you need to take it slow and go at your own pace. Now tip six comes right after tip five. Once you're going at your own speed, even if you're on the treadmill, you're just trying to jog it out, it is perfectly okay. Listen, listen very closely. You're jogging, you're doing a good job. You're already out there. But let me tell you, if you feel like your leg is a little bit hurting or you, your back or whatever, or you know what? Look, you've been going for maybe 10 minutes now and you just want to walk. Oh my God, I'm going to totally say this. Then walk. There's nothing wrong with being what us runners call a walker, which is a person who runs and sometimes walks and a person who walks and sometimes runs. You're a walker. It's okay. Walk if you have to walk. Tip number seven, the last one. And then there may be there out there on a bonus because I'm a nice person like that. I look in bonuses. Bonuses only like bonus rounds and all that good stuff. Okay, so tip seven, this is a big one. Have a good time. Understand that you're a beginner and I'm pretty sure you're like, well, those are kind of crappy. I'm pretty, I know all those. Here's the deal. Here's the real truth. When you are starting a new habit, a new behavior, uh, you got a new kick of enthusiasm, nothing kills it if you don't have the mindset to continue. So everything I just told you, yes, it is very much so the basics of the basics, but it's really important that you are out there and that you're enjoying yourself. Should I stretch before I walk or run? Or should I not do that? If you feel more comfortable stretching before you run, then go ahead and do it. 
um, but I think it's very crucial after you run you most definitely need to stretch you know your legs you most definitely need to stretch so I would say before runs it just kind of depends on the person you are I think you should start off with like maybe a light jog or maybe a fast-paced walk um, just to warm up your muscles and get your body kind of into it before you just go on a full-out sprint I wouldn't suggest that um, but I will would suggest after you run whatever you decide to do before your pre-run whether you stretch or you just do a fast walk which I think is very important um, the really crucial thing is to stretch after your cool down so that is the bonus tip but I of course I'll have more tips for you beginning runners um, next week on our next episode of Fit Fun Friday all right well I'll see you guys later Bye. Deuces.